10 Africans who have made significant contributions to the world. From ancient civilizations to modern day innovators, Africa has a rich history of groundbreaking contributions to the world. This video explores the lives and achievements of 10 remarkable Africans who have left an indelible mark on humanity. See if your name appears in the video credits. If not, consider supporting this channel or another one that features the work of African creators. 1. Nelson Mandela Nelson Rolilla Mandela was a South African anti-apartheid revolutionary, political leader, and philanthropist who served as president of South Africa from 1994 to 1999. He was the country's first black head of state and the first elected in a fully representative democratic election. His government focused on dismantling the legacy of apartheid by tackling institutionalized racism and fostering racial reconciliation. Ideologically an African nationalist and socialist, he served as president of the African National Congress ANC, party from 1991 to 1997. Early Life and Education Nelson Mandela was born on July 18, 1918, in Viso, South Africa, into the Madiba clan of the Thembu people. His father, Gadla Henry Mfakaniiswa, was the principal counselor to the acting king of the Thembu people, John Jintaba Dalangibo. His mother, Nosakini Fanny, was John Jintaba's third wife. Mandela was named Rolilala, which means troublemaker in Kosa. Mandela was educated at local mission schools and later at Helltown College, a Methodist boarding school in the Eastern Cape. In 1939, he enrolled at the University College of Fort Hare, a leading black institution in South Africa. However, he was expelled in 1940 for participating in a student protest against the institution's discriminatory policies. After his expulsion from Fort Hare, Mandela moved to Johannesburg, where he worked as a lawyer. He became involved in the African National Congress ANC, a black nationalist organization that was opposed to apartheid, the system of racial segregation and discrimination that was enforced in South Africa from 1948 to 1994. Activism against apartheid Mandela rose to prominence in the ANC during the 1950s. He was a key figure in the organization's defiance campaign of 1952, which involved peaceful protests against apartheid laws. In 1955, he helped to draft the Freedom Charter, a document that outlined the ANC's vision for a democratic South Africa. Mandela was arrested several times for his activism. In 1961, he was charged with treason and acquitted. However, he was later convicted of sabotage and sentenced to life imprisonment in 1964. He spent the next 27 years in prison, most of them on Robben Island, a remote island off the coast of Cape Town. Release from prison and presidency. Mandela's imprisonment made him an international symbol of the struggle against apartheid. His release from prison on February 11, 1990, was a watershed moment in South African history. Mandela became president of the ANC in 1991 and led the party to victory in the country's first fully representative democratic elections in 1994. He became South Africa's first black president and the first elected in a fully representative democratic election. Mandela's presidency was marked by a commitment to reconciliation and nation building. He established the Truth and Reconciliation Commission to investigate apartheid crimes, and he promoted the development of a multiracial democracy. Retirement and Legacy Mandela stepped down as president in 1999 and retired from public life. He continued to work for social justice and human rights, and he remained a global icon of peace and reconciliation. Mandela died on December 5th. 2013 at the age of 95 he is widely regarded as one of the greatest leaders of the 20th century his legacy includes his fight against apartheid his commitment to reconciliation and his promotion of democracy and human rights 2 kwame krumah kwame krumah was a ghanaian statesman who played a pivotal role in the independence movement in ghana which was known as the gold coast at the time he was a key figure in the pan-africanist movement which advocated for african unity Early Life and Education Kwame Krumo was born on September 21, 1909, in Kofel, Gold Coast, now Ghana. His father was a goldsmith, and his mother was a trader. He attended a Methodist primary school and then a Roman Catholic secondary school. In 1935, he won a scholarship to study at Lincoln University in Pennsylvania, United States. He later studied at the University of Pennsylvania and the University of London, Pan-Africanism and the Independence Movement. While studying in the United States, Krumah became involved in the Pan-African movement. 
He was inspired by the writings of W.E.B. Du Bois and Marcus Garvey, who advocated for African liberation and unity. Krumah also met other African leaders, such as Jomo Kenyatta of Kenya and Julius Nyerere of Tanganyika, now Tanzania. In 1945, Krumah attended the 5th Pan-African Congress in Manchester, England. He became a vocal advocate for independence from colonial rule and for African unity. He returned to the Gold Coast in 1947 and founded the Convention People's Party, CPP, Ghana's independence and Krumah's presidency. The CPP quickly became the leading political party on the Gold Coast. In 1951, Krumah led the party to victory in the country's first general election. He became Prime Minister of the Gold Coast in 1952. Ghana gained independence from British rule on March 6, 1957. Krumah became the first president of Ghana. He introduced a number of reforms, including universal education, a national health service, and land reform. He also promoted African unity and helped establish the Organization of African Unity, OEU, in 1963. Krumah's decline and overthrow. Krumah's government became increasingly authoritarian in the 1960s. He suppressed dissent and cracked down on political opponents. His economic policies also proved to be unsuccessful, and Ghana experienced economic problems. In 1966, Krumah was overthrown in a coup d'etat. He fled into exile in Guinea. He died in Romania in 1972. Legacy Kwame Krumah is a controversial figure in Ghanaian history. He is praised by some for his role in leading Ghana to independence and for his promotion of African unity. However, he is also criticized for his authoritarian rule and his economic policies. Despite his flaws, Kruma was a visionary leader who played a significant role in shaping the modern African continent. He remains a symbol of African independence and self-determination. 3. Wole Soenka Wole Soenka, born Akinwan Aliol Babatunde Soenka, is a renowned Nigerian playwright, novelist, poet, and essayist who is known for his sharp wit, insightful social commentary, and exploration of the human condition. He is widely considered one of the most influential writers in Africa and the world, and in 1986, he became the first African laureate of the Nobel Prize in Literature. Soenka's works often delve into the complexities of African culture, politics, and history, tackling themes of colonialism, post-colonialism, identity, and the struggle for freedom. He is known for his powerful use of language, his vivid imagery, and his ability to weave together humor and tragedy. His plays are particularly notable for their innovative and experimental nature, and they have been staged all over the world. In addition to his literary achievements, Soenka is also an outspoken critic of injustice and oppression. He has been involved in numerous political and social causes, and he has been imprisoned and exiled for his activism. He is a fearless advocate for human rights and democracy, and he is a champion of the African continent. Here are some of Wole Soenka's most notable works. The Swamp Dwellers, 1958 This play is a satirical comedy that explores the clash between traditional African values and the corrupting influence of Western culture. The Lion and the Jewel, 1959 This play is a witty and charming comedy that satirizes the superficiality of modern African society. A Dance of the Forests, 1960 This play is a groundbreaking work of experimental theater that explores the history and future of Nigeria. Death and the King's Horseman, 1975 This play is a powerful and moving drama about the clash between tradition and modernity in colonial Africa. The Road, 1985 This play is a surreal and allegorical drama that explores the themes of alienation, violence, and the search for meaning. Wole Soenka is a true giant of literature and a towering figure in African culture. His works have had a profound impact on generations of writers and thinkers, and he continues to be a voice for peace, justice, and human dignity. 4. Miriam Makiba Miriam Makiba, known affectionately as Mama Africa, was a South African singer, songwriter, actress, and activist who became an international icon of musical resistance during the apartheid era. Her powerful voice and soulful melodies resonated with audiences around the world, and she became a symbol of hope and resilience for the African diaspora. Born Zenzile Miriam Makiba on March 4, 1932, in Prospect, South Africa, Makiba grew up in Sophia Town, a vibrant and multicultural neighborhood that was a hub of jazz and African music. 
She began singing at a young age, and her talent caught the attention of music producer Hugh Masekela, who helped her launch her career in the 1950s. Makiba's music was a fusion of traditional African rhythms, jazz, and pop, and she infused her songs with a powerful message of liberation and social justice. Her signature song, Pata Pata, became an international hit, and she soon became a global star. In 1959, Makiba's career took a dramatic turn when she appeared in the film Come Back, Africa, directed by Lionel Robeson. The film, which documented the struggles of black South Africans under apartheid, was banned in South Africa, but it won critical acclaim worldwide and catapulted Makiba to international fame. Makiba's political activism also flourished during this time. She became an outspoken critic of apartheid, and her music became a powerful tool for resistance. In 1960, she was forced to flee South Africa after being banned from performing and speaking out against the government. She settled in the United States, where she continued to perform and advocate for human rights. Makiba's exile from South Africa lasted for 31 years. During this time, she toured the world, performing for audiences in Europe, Asia, and Latin America. She became a close friend of civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. and Muhammad Ali, and she used her platform to speak out against racism and injustice. In 1990, after the fall of apartheid, Makiba was finally able to return to her homeland. She was greeted as a hero, and she continued to perform and advocate for peace and reconciliation in South Africa. Miriam Makiba passed away on November 9, 2008, at the age of 76. She was a true icon of African music and a fearless champion of human rights. Her legacy lives on in her music, her activism, and her unwavering commitment to justice and equality. 5. Desmond Tutu Desmond Tutu was a South African Anglican bishop and Nobel Peace Prize laureate known for his work as a human rights activist and for his role in the fight against apartheid. He was the first black archbishop of Cape Town and primate of the Church of the Province of Southern Africa. Early Life and Education Desmond Pilo Tutu was born on October 7, 1931, in Clarksdorp, South Africa. His father, Zachariah Zelolo Tutu, was a school teacher, and his mother, Alan Dorothea Mavortseg Mathler, was a domestic worker. Tutu was raised in a poor family in the township of Soweto. Tutu was educated at local mission schools and later at St. Peter's Theological College in Rosettenville, Johannesburg. He was ordained as an Anglican priest in 1960. Activism Against Apartheid Tutu rose to prominence in the 1970s as a leading voice in the anti-apartheid movement. He was a vocal critic of the South African government's policy of racial segregation and discrimination, and he called for peaceful resistance. In 1978, Tutu was appointed the first black general secretary of the South African Council of Churches. In this role, he continued to speak out against apartheid and to advocate for human rights. Nobel Peace Prize and Archbishop of Cape Town in 1984, Tutu was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his unwavering commitment to justice and peace in South Africa. He was the first black South African to receive the award. In 1986, Tutu was appointed Archbishop of Cape Town. He used this position to continue his fight against apartheid and to promote reconciliation between South Africa's black and white communities. Truth and Reconciliation Commission after the fall of apartheid in 1994, Tutu was appointed chair of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, TRC. The TRC was a government body tasked with investigating human rights abuses that had taken place during the apartheid era. Tutu played a crucial role in the TRC's work, ensuring that it was conducted in a fair and impartial manner. The TRC's findings helped to bring about reconciliation between South Africa's black and white communities. Retirement and Legacy Tutu retired from the Archbishopric in 1996, but he continued to be a vocal advocate for human rights and peace. He was a tireless traveler, speaking out against injustice and oppression around the world. Tutu died on December 26, 2021, at the age of 90. He was a true giant of the human rights movement, and his legacy lives on in his unwavering commitment to justice and equality. 6. Wangari Matai Wangari Matai was a Kenyan environmental and social activist who founded the Green Belt Movement, an environmental non-governmental organization focused on the planting of trees, environmental conservation, and women's rights. In 2004, she became the first African woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize. Early Life and Education Wangari Matai was born on April 1, 1940, in Nairi, Kenya. She was the first of six children born to Mwangi Matai, a farmer, and Nayokabi Matai, a homemaker. 
Matai attended local mission schools and then went on to study biology at Mount St. Scholastica College in Atchison, Kansas, in the United States. She earned a bachelor's degree in 1964 and a master's degree in 1966. After graduating from Mount St. Scholastica, Matai returned to Kenya and began working as a research assistant at the University of Nairobi. She later earned a doctorate in veterinary anatomy from the University of Nairobi in 1971. Activism Matai became involved in environmental activism in the 1970s. She was concerned about the deforestation of Kenya and the impact it was having on the environment and the people who depended on it. In 1977, Matai founded the Green Belt Movement. The Green Belt Movement is a grassroots organization that encourages women to plant trees. The organization has planted over 51 million trees in Kenya, helping to reduce deforestation and improve the environment. Matai's work with the Green Belt Movement has made her a leading figure in the environmental movement in Africa. She has received numerous awards for her work, including the Nobel Peace Prize in 2004. Nobel Peace Prize The Nobel Committee awarded Matai the Nobel Peace Prize in 2004 for her work with the Green Belt Movement. The committee cited Matai's contribution to sustainable development, democracy, and peace. Matai's Nobel Prize was a landmark moment for Africa and for the environmental movement. It was the first time that an African woman had won the Nobel Peace Prize, and it brought attention to the importance of environmental conservation and women's rights in Africa. Death and Legacy Matai died on September 25, 2011, at the age of 71. She was a true pioneer in the environmental movement, and her legacy continues to inspire people around the world. Matai's work with the Green Belt Movement has had a profound impact on Kenya and the world. The organization has planted over 51 million trees, helping to reduce deforestation and improve the environment. Matai's work has also helped to raise awareness of the importance of environmental conservation and women's rights. Matai was a true inspiration to people all over the world. She was a tireless advocate for environmental conservation and women's rights, and her work has made a real difference in the world. 7. Thomas Sankara Thomas Isidore Noel Sankara, December 21, 1949 to October 15, 1987, was a Burkinabe military officer, Marxist revolutionary, Pan-Africanist, and president of Burkina Faso from his coup in 1983 to his assassination in 1987. He is viewed by supporters as a charismatic and iconic figure of the revolution. Early Life and Education Thomas Sankara was born in Yako, Upper Volta, now Burkina Faso, on December 21, 1949. He was the son of a peasant farmer and a trader. He attended Catholic missionary schools and then the Ecole Primaire Supérieure EPS, and Lycée Technique de Bobo Diolasso. In 1966, Sankara was admitted to the Ecole Nationale d'Administration ENA, in Ouagadougou, where he trained to be a military officer. He graduated in 1969 and was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the Burkina B Army. Military Career Sankara rose through the ranks of the army, becoming a captain in 1974. He was a vocal critic of the government of President Maurice Umiogo, which he accused of corruption and nepotism. In 1982, Sankara was dismissed from the army for his political activities, revolution and presidency. On August 4, 1983, Sankara led a coup d'état that overthrew President Jean-Baptiste Aoudrogo. Sankara renamed the country Burkina Faso, meaning land of the upright men. He also adopted a socialist ideology and launched a series of radical reforms. Sankara's reforms included land reform, which redistributed land from large landowners to peasants, nationalization of key industries such as banks, mines, and transportation, promotion of gender equality, which included quotas for women in government and the military, education reform, which made primary education compulsory and free, Healthcare reform, which expanded access to healthcare. Sankara also focused on environmentalism and sustainable development. He launched a massive campaign to plant trees, and he banned the use of pesticides and herbicides. Assassination Sankara's popularity made him a target for the CIA and other Western powers. On October 15, 1987, he was assassinated in a coup d'etat led by Blaise Compare, his former friend and comrade in arms. Legacy Sankara is remembered as a charismatic and visionary leader who sought to transform Burkina Faso into a prosperous and just society. He is considered a hero by many people in Africa and around the world. Sankara's legacy is complex and contested. 
His supporters praise him for his commitment to social justice and his efforts to improve the lives of ordinary people. His critics argue that he was autocratic and that his reforms were not sustainable. Despite the criticisms, Sankara remains a popular figure in Burkina Faso and beyond. He is an inspiration to many people who are fighting for social justice and a better world. 8. Aikwe Arma Aikwe Arma, born October 28, 1939, is a Ghanaian novelist, essayist, and poet who is considered one of the most important figures in African literature. His work is known for its sharp social criticism, its exploration of African history and culture, and its lyrical prose. Arma was born in Sekandi Takaradi, Ghana, to Fanti-speaking parents. He was educated at Achimota School in Ghana and Groton School in Massachusetts, and he received a bachelor's degree in sociology from Harvard University. After graduating from Harvard, Arma worked as a scriptwriter in Algeria and as a teacher in Tanzania, Lesotho, and Senegal. Arma's first novel, The Beautiful Ones Are Not Yet Born, 1968, is a bleak and pessimistic portrayal of post-independence Ghana. The novel follows a corrupt civil servant named Kwame as he wanders through Accra, the capital city, and reflects on the country's problems. Arma's second novel, 2000 Seasons, 1973, is a more hopeful work that traces the history of Africa from the time of the ancient Egyptians to the present day. The novel is written in a poetic style and is infused with traditional African myths and symbols. Arma's other works include The Healers, 1978, Fragments, 1970, The African Child, 1965, and Crick, Croc, 1973. His work has been translated into over 20 languages and has been praised for its originality, its power, and its enduring relevance. Arma is a controversial figure who has been criticized for his pessimistic view of Africa and his rejection of Western values. However, his work is also widely admired for its honesty, its insight, and its ability to capture the complexity of the African experience. Here are some of Aikwe Arma's most notable works. The Beautiful Ones Are Not Yet Born, 1968 This novel is a bleak and pessimistic portrayal of post-independence Ghana. The novel follows a corrupt civil servant named Kwame as he wanders through Accra, the capital city, and reflects on the country's problems. 2000 Seasons, 1973 This novel is a more hopeful work that traces the history of Africa from the time of the ancient Egyptians to the present day. The novel is written in a poetic style and is infused with traditional African myths and symbols. The Healers, 1978 This novel explores the conflict between traditional African medicine and Western medicine. The novel follows a young man's journey to become a healer in the Asante Kingdom while the British are colonizing Ghana. Fragments, 1970 This novel is a collection of short stories that explore the themes of alienation, loss, and longing. The stories are set in various parts of Africa and feature characters who are struggling to find their place in the world. The African Child, 1965 This autobiographical novel tells the story of Arma's childhood in Ghana. The novel is a moving and honest portrayal of growing up in a poor and traditional African society. Crick, Croc, 1973 This novel is a collection of poems and stories that explore the themes of history, memory, and identity. The poems and stories are written in a variety of styles and are infused with traditional African language and imagery. Aikwe Arma is a major figure in African literature and his work has had a profound impact on generations of writers and thinkers. His novels, essays, and poems are powerful and insightful explorations of the African experience and they continue to be relevant and engaging today. 9. Chinua Achebe Chinua Achebe (1930–2013) was a Nigerian novelist, poet, and essayist who is considered one of the most important figures in African literature. He is best known for his novel Things Fall Apart (1958), which is widely regarded as the foundational work of modern African literature. Early Life and Education Chinua Achebe was born in Ajidai, Nigeria, on November 16, 1930. He was the son of a Christian missionary and attended a missionary school. Achebe studied English at University College, Ibadan, where he met other writers who would become influential figures in African literature, such as Wole Soenka and Christopher Okigbo. Early career After graduating from Ibadan, Achebe worked as a teacher and editor. He began writing short stories and poems in the late 1950s, and his first novel, Things Fall Apart, was published in 1958. 
The novel is set in Nigeria in the early 20th century and tells the story of Akonkwo, a traditional Igbo man who struggles to come to terms with the changes brought about by colonialism. Things Fall Apart was a critical and commercial success, and it established Achebe as a major voice in African literature. The novel was translated into over 50 languages and sold millions of copies worldwide. It is considered a classic work of African literature and has been praised for its powerful prose, its insightful exploration of African culture, and its critique of colonialism. Later career, Achebe published several other novels, including No Longer at Ease, 1960, Arrow of God, 1964, A Man of the People, 1966, Antioles of the Savannah, 1987, and Home and Exile, 2000. He also wrote several volumes of poetry, essays, and children's literature. Achebe was a vocal critic of colonialism and neocolonialism, and his work often explored the themes of identity, cultural conflict, and the search for freedom. He was also a champion of African literature and culture, and he helped to promote the work of other African writers. Achebe's Legacy Chinua Achebe is considered one of the most important writers of the 20th century. His work has had a profound impact on African literature and has helped to bring African literature to a global audience. He is a role model for African writers and artists, and his work continues to inspire and challenge readers around the world. Here are some of Chinua Achebe's most notable works. Things Fall Apart, 1958 This novel is a classic work of African literature and tells the story of Akonkwo, a traditional Igbo man who struggles to come to terms with the changes brought about by colonialism. No Longer at Ease, 1960 This novel is a sequel to Things Fall Apart and tells the story of Akonkwo's son, who tries to navigate the challenges of post-colonial Nigeria. Arrow of God, 1964 This novel explores the conflict between traditional and modern values in pre-colonial Nigeria. A Man of the People, 1966 This novel is a satire of Nigerian politics and criticizes the corruption and hypocrisy of the ruling elite. Anthills of the Savannah, 1987 This novel is a complex and allegorical work that explores the themes of power, corruption, and betrayal. Home and Exile, 2000 This collection of essays reflects on Achebe's life and work and his thoughts on African literature and culture. Chinua Achebe was a brilliant writer and a powerful voice for freedom and justice. His work continues to inspire and challenge readers around the world. 10. Chaikanta Diop Chaikanta Diop 1923-1986, was a Senegalese historian, anthropologist, physicist, and politician who was considered one of the most important figures in the development of Afrocentrism. His work focused on the history and culture of Africa, and he argued that African civilizations were just as advanced as those of Europe and Asia. Early Life and Education Chak Anta Diop was born in Thaitu, Senegal, on December 29, 1923. He was the son of a Muslim Wolof family and was educated in a traditional Islamic school. Diop's family was part of the Murid Brotherhood, the only independent Muslim fraternity in Africa according to Diop. He obtained the colonial equivalent of the Metropolitan French Baccalaureate in Senegal before moving to Paris to study for a degree. Academic Career After graduating from the Sorbonne, Diop taught physics and mathematics at the University of Dakar. He also began writing about African history and culture. His first book, Lanteriorite des Civilizations Negers, Myths et Verites, 1954, argued that African civilizations were older than those of Europe and Asia. Diop's work was controversial, and he was often criticized by Western scholars. However, he also gained a large following among African intellectuals and activists. He was a vocal critic of colonialism and neocolonialism, and he argued that African peoples had a rich and vibrant history and culture that had been erased by European imperialism. Political career In 1960, Senegal gained independence from France. Diop was elected to the National Assembly, and he served as Minister of Culture from 1966 to 1970. He also served as President of the Senegalese Academy of Sciences. Later Life and Legacy Diop continued to write and lecture until his death in 1986. His work has had a profound impact on the study of African history and culture. He is considered a founding figure of Afrocentrism, and his work has helped to raise awareness of the contributions of African civilizations to world history. Diop's major works Lanteriorite des Civilizations Negers, Myths et Verites, 1954 Nations Negers et Culture, 1955 Anteriorite des Civilizations Negers, Etudes Critiques, 1967 
Civilization OU Barbary, Introduction A LA2 de Civilizations Negro Africains, 1971. Civilization ET Barbary, L'Afrique dans l'Histoire, 1981. Diop's contributions to African history and culture. Chaik and Tad Diop's work has had a profound impact on the study of African history and culture. He argued that African civilizations were just as advanced as those of Europe and Asia, and he challenged the Eurocentric view of history that had dominated Western scholarship. Diop's work has been praised by African intellectuals and activists for its insights into African history and culture. His work has also been criticized by some Western scholars, who argue that his conclusions are not supported by the evidence. Despite the controversy, Diop's work has had a lasting impact on the study of African history and culture. He is considered the founding figure of Afrocentrism, and his work has helped to raise awareness of the contributions of African civilizations to world history. The stories of these 10 remarkable Africans, showcased in this video, are not mere historical accounts, they are living testaments to the power of human potential and the unwavering spirit of excellence. Their lives and achievements serve as beacons of inspiration, urging us to challenge the status quo, embrace our individuality, and strive to make a positive impact on the world around us. As we reflect on the contributions of these extraordinary individuals, we must also recognize the vast pool of talent and ingenuity that continues to emerge from the continent of Africa. Africa is a land of endless possibilities, a place where dreams take flight and innovation flourishes. Let us not forget the transformative power of education and the importance of nurturing young minds. It is through these avenues that we can cultivate the next generation of African leaders, innovators, and change makers. By investing in our youth and empowering them to pursue their passions, we can ensure that Africa's legacy of excellence continues to shine brightly for generations to come. As we close this video, let us carry forward the spirit of these 10 remarkable Africans, embracing their unwavering commitment to progress, justice, and social upliftment. Let us honor their legacy by dedicating ourselves to making a positive difference in our world, inspired by their unwavering belief in the limitless potential of humanity. Africa's story is not yet written. It is a story that is being shaped by the dreams and aspirations of its people, a story that is waiting to be told. Let us join hands and paint the canvas of Africa's future with colors of innovation, compassion, and shared prosperity. Poignant and thought-provoking, this video has left us speechless. We're honored to have shared the stories of these remarkable Africans with you. What did you find most inspiring about their lives and achievements? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more captivating stories of African excellence. Wishing for your talents to soar to new heights at the earliest. May your abilities reach new peaks soon. Remember, we're all part of this journey together. Let's keep exploring, learning, and growing. Until next time, stay curious and keep spreading those positive vibes. Thanks for joining in. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to hit that like button, drop a comment, and hit subscribe to stay tuned for more exciting content coming your way.